Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the woman's curvy crochet cowl pullover. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. Or we're going to do the kids curvy crochet cowl pullover. Now today what we're going to do is that both videos are exactly identical. So whether you came in for the adult version or the child version it's still the same tutorial because the fact is is that there are three different sizes for the kids or there's three different sizes for the adults. But the concept of layout is still the same. So either way whether you're going to follow me along with doing the four year old size you're going to have to substitute the information as far as the number of chains and etc. in order to compensate for the different sizes. So today's tutorial is about doing the four year old or four year old size with you on camera but you just have to substitute the information that you're finding within this patterns. So today I'm going to just break down these patterns first and then we're going to jump in and get started on doing the child size. So on camera we have the adult size over here and we have the child size over here and I'm going to be doing the four years old child size here. So you're going to notice that there's instructions in different colors and here it's red, yellow and green and then in the adult size in the small version extra small, small and medium is in red, large, extra large is in yellow and two to four extra large is in green. So what you have to just do is that you have to pick the pattern that you're going to follow along. Both patterns were written individually because there's a little bit of a significant change on the sizing. Of course a child is obviously much smaller for size wise as you see here versus an adult size. So what there is a few changes but the, still the concept is still the same. So what we're going to notice here is that there's three pages for both of these patterns and what we, when we go to follow along we're going to be able to do the same kind of thing. So let's talk about some of the differences that you will find and let's begin from that point. So here is the different sizes. We have the child size over here and then the adult size is over here. So the pattern is just on the back here if I just fold it back forward just to prove that to you. So you can see the adult sizes in the back. So when we go to look at it is that the both and the front and the panel are the same pattern. So there's not a front and back panel. They're both the same. So for example it says begin at lower edge chain 12, 16 or 20. So you have to change the information to match the size. So in the four years old size I'm going to follow the, the red color and in the six years old it would be the 60 or it would be the yellow color and then the green is the next one. For the adult size version it's still the same. Extra small to medium is this one. Large extra large is the 26 here and then two extra large two four extra large is in green. So you just have to follow the instruction that is available to you. So what I'd highly recommend to you is that when you're following a, a, a pattern like this and there's a size difference I would just circle the number that you know you have to hit. So I was, I'm going to do the four years old. So circle chain 12. So they've done it in color sequence as well but sometimes circling it just makes it easier as you go. So every time a decision needs to be made you're going to notice that there is a difference of these colors. So let's go to see a decision that is on page number two. Let's cover that quickly. So let's take a look at this. This is page two. The one on top is the adult size. The one here is the child size. I'm trying to keep it on both sides of the screen. So when we go to shape the raglans here at the front and I'll show you what that is in a moment. You're going to notice that you're going to just follow the instructions down and then when there's a decision to be made it says repeat the last four rows and then it says either three, two or two. So you're following the color that matches the size that you're making. So this would be extra small to medium for this. Even in the child size just like you see here you're going to say shape the raglans and it says repeat the last row four, four rows three times. So you can see here in the difference is that in the child size it doesn't have what you have a difference of sizes here for the length but the child size is pretty much the same. And because there's no difference of colors of repeating the four rows three times you know that is the same instruction for all of the sizes that were provided here. So when you go to look at the sleeve cuffs let's uh, just look at the sleeves really qu uh, quickly here and when we look at the sleeves coming down is that we have the sleeves up here. It says chain 12 and then follow these instructions and it says go until nine and a half inches, 10 or 11. This is the adult size version here. And then when you're looking at the child size you say that it's chain eight. So you can see that there's a difference of sizing but once you understand it it becomes pretty cool. So on this instruction up here is that you're repeating the instruction to a seven and a half inches all the way to nine and again it's based on the size. So let's take a look at the shaping of the panels that we have to do next and then we're going to continue. So on screen is the shaping of the body panel. So the front body panel and the back body panel looks identical and it will look like this before it's actually assembled. And if you look carefully at it you can see that it comes down 
and then it will slightly jet out and then it will kind of circle around the bottom and hover like so. So the same thing is happening on the kids version here when you see it the same way. Again coming down and kind of hovering around and then creating it. So the only difference really is the amount of measurements then in the height. So let's take a look at this one here. So you'll see that the shaping looks kind of different. That's because this is a smaller pattern so they can make it, uh, they've got more things here. So if they would have taken this out here for the adults, this would have been the same kind of look and the size as far as diagram wise. So it's telling you the amount of inches that things are. So when you look at the bottom, this here is the actual cuff that we start with and then we start jutting it out and then we come back in and then we make it more narrow as we come to the top. And again the same thing here is happening on the adult version. So it's the cuff going out and then going in. So between here and here is all one particular body panel uh, that we have and then we just have to rotate it around and then sew it along the edges in order to bring it to conclusion. So the body is the same way as far as like the adult body and the child body. It's the same shape and again it's just different inches in order to give you the different size. So what I'm gonna be doing with you on camera is that I'm gonna be doing the child size version with you because the uh, stitch work is pretty much the same. The only difference is that there's a difference of stitch counting in order to compensate for the different sizes. So let's talk a little bit about the yarn first and then let's get our crochet hook and let's get going. So on both patterns you'll see that there's a ball count and you can see this here and let's bring up the adult version. There's the adult version. So extra small to medium it's 11 balls. Large to extra large is 12 and 2 to 4 extra large is 14 balls. And then the kid size is 4 years of age is 5 balls and then 6 years of age is 6 balls and 8 years of age is 7 balls. So this is what the ball of yarn looks like here and you can should be able to find that. You can get it on yarnspirations.com as well. It's a beautiful thick yarn. You're gonna need a 9 millimeter size M crochet hook in order to play today and uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So without further ado let's uh, start looking at these panels and we're gonna just start working the pattern in order. So we're gonna start off with the front and the back body panel. So they're both identical so we have to make two of them. So I did one in advance so that I already knew how to do the pattern. And you wanna look for th things that you'll notice here is do you see the bumps? Do you see how they naturally line up on top of each other? That's gonna naturally happen in this pattern if you're following it right. And I'm gonna give you tips and tricks in order to follow. Just so, as a full disclaimer as well, I just substitute with Bernat Southie Chunky because that's what I had here and this is what I'm gonna be using today. So we're gonna start off at the very bottom here and then it just bells out and then we're gonna go up on a diagonal for so many um, um, stitch counts and then once we get there we're gonna jet back in just a little bit and then we're gonna then start working towards the top in order to get all the way. So it requires you to really just work step by step in order to check things off your checklist and it's really quite easy from that point. So let's grab our crochet hook now. It's an, a 9 millimeter size M crochet hook and then Bernat Roving or you can substitute it if you have another equivalent yarn if you want to play it that way as well. So let's begin to do the, the front or the back panel. They're both the same. So remember that I'm using the child four years of age size and just substitute the information but I'm going in order of what the pattern is and just follow along. So I'm going to start off with the bottom and I'm just gonna create a slip knot and I'm going to use a uh, chaining of 12. So remember that the chain counts will differ in the different sizes that you're gonna play with if you're not doing the four years of age. So I'm gonna chain 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So once I have my twelfth in here, I'm going to start off with row number one. I'd highly recommend you print this pattern and check it, things off as you go. So let's go for row number one. So row number one, we're going to go second chain from the hook and I want you to put in one single crochet second chain from the hook. So just go over, so one and two and go one single crochet into that one and then into the one next to it. So the very next one you're gonna do a half double crochet. So you're going to wrap the hook first and then going into the next chain, pull through and half double crochet. So all you're just gonna do across this is gonna do opposite of each other. So the next one will be single crochet and the one after that will be half double crochet. And you work across your whole chain just doing opposite to each other. This is what's creating those bumps that look like they're going straight up in the project. So it's either gonna be a half double crochet or single and it's really quite easy as you're going all the way across. So this is a single, this is a half and a single 
and a half and a single. So a single is, will end your particular uh, row count. So if you started off with a single on the one side you will end with the single. So if you start off with a half double which we will next time we'll finish off with the half double. So let's uh, begin to do row number two. So let's turn to work and do row number two. So we're gonna start off by chaining one and in the very first one we're now gonna start jetting outward. So we're gonna create this look. So the first stitch right underneath it is gonna have two single crochets into the first one. So you're gonna go one and two. Now here's the thing. This was a single crochet that we just did this on top of. The next one is a half double. Okay, so if you're keeping in count of that. So on top of the half doubles there should always be a slip stitch that's over top of it. Now I know you're thinking slip stitch you're never gonna get anywhere. It's a really thick yarn and it's a really thick hook. So it goes actually quicker than you will realize. So the next one be is a slip stitch and then the next one after that is a half double. So the one that's right below it is actually technically a single crochet but this time it's a half double going right on top of it. And you will notice in the next uh, row when we go to do this you'll see that it's gonna develop. So the next one is a slip stitch and the next one is a half double and you keep doing that all the way across. So slip and a half and slip and a half and slip and watch what's gonna happen. Your very final chain or stitch that you have is gonna be two single crochets. So one and two. So when you're doing these ones and you're expanding out it'll always be single crochets that are on the edges when you're going to do that if that helps you to keep that in balance. So that was row number two. Let's move along to row number three. So row number three we're gonna expand again like we had been so we're, we're gonna go out like this. So we're gonna start off and we're gonna chain one and two single crochets into the first one. So one and two. So this time it's going to be um, a slip stitch in the next stitch. Okay, so right over top of this other one was a half double crochet. So okay, so that if you just have to remember that and the next one it was a slip stitch. So you have to put an opposite. So the first one is a slip stitch and the next one is a half double. If once you come to understand this pattern you will be able to see it. It's just a matter of playing with it a little bit longer. So we're gonna slip and the next one is a half. Okay, so you're gonna slip and the next one is a half. And you can always tell which one it has more. See how this has this extra line here that doesn't here? That means that it was a half double crochet. So that means that you slip when you get to it and then the next one see how more simple it looks? So this one must be a half double crochet. So slip and half. And then the next one is a slip and then you got one stitch left so these two are two single crochets in order to expand it out. So this was row number three. So the pattern has now just been established and so you can start seeing the bumps are starting to appear in this work. When you go to see it, see it? Isn't that awesome? So what you're gonna do now is that you are going to put in a stitch marker at the end of this row. So right where we are right now just grab another piece of yarn and just put a stitch marker. It's saying to do that so I think we'll probably be referring to that in the future. So let's get a stitch marker in there next and then we'll be right back. To place a stitch marker in I'm just grabbing a spare piece of yarn. There's also stitch markers and all I just want you to do is just go in behind an established stitch. So just going right through the project and I want you just to kind of loop this stitch marker through and this will be in like that. Okay, so this is uh, considered, this was the right side, wrong side. So this is considered the right side of the project. So um, when you go to um, look at it from this point of view, this is the right side that you're looking at right now. Okay, so I'm gonna put a note saying my stitch marker is on the left which signifies the right side. Okay, so I made my note on the pattern. The stitch marker is on the left which signifies the right side. So here in the instruction it says repeat the last row which is row number three 12 more times. So what I'm gonna do here is that I'm just gonna move this out of the side is that I'm going to write the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
9, 10, 11 and 12. So all I'm gonna do is repeat row number three a total of 12 more times. Okay, so what we have to do is that we have to re make sure that we're watching the pattern as far as like the, the um, half double crochet and the slip stitch. So let's just repeat the pattern one more time and uh, then I'm gonna leave the rest of those uh, two through 12 for you and then you'll get that done and then meet me back up and we're gonna start moving on further into the body. So let's turn our work and begin a repeat of rows through one through 12. So what you have to just do is that you have to watch out for the slip stitching and the half double crochet that creates these bumps. So you have to do what is opposite to what is in the row below. So when you're going to repeat one through 12, or the rows one through 12, you're gonna start off with this, um, a chain one and then you're gonna put two single crochets into the same one. So we have to look to the stitches to see what things are. So what we have is that this was a half double crochet and you can kinda see that it's popping out here and here. So these are the half double crochets and the ones in between are the slip stitches. So when it's a half double crochet underneath, you're gonna start off with the slip and then the next one will be a half. So once you get started and know what they are, it's just easier. So slip and half and 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 slip. So this one here is a slip and if you remember we slipped it right immediately in the beginning when we started if you remember that and so then the last stitch here is going to be a total of two single crochets to do the expansion. So that was repeating of rows through one or uh, one through 12. So you're doing this for all sizes. So the kids it's gonna be just slightly different for the adult size version. So you just mark it off in your sheet. You just did a repeat row of number one. So you start off again. So let's just get you started for number two. So chain up one and then two single crochets and again to expand. And again you're looking to what you see underneath. Okay so you can see that these are the halves here. Okay, so this must be a half here because there's a slip in the middle and so you're starting off with the slip and then a half and etc. So slip and a half and you're gonna get to the other side of the line and remember the very last one then has two single crochets in it. So please continue to do this. Um, you're gonna repeat this a total of one through 12 times. So this is my one already done and I've just started the second one. Check it off in your list and meet me back here and we'll continue along in today's pattern. Okay, so I've just now finished. I did my repeats of one through 12 and you can see it expanded out. Now this is my second piece so I've laid it over top of the original to make sure it's the same size but if it's your first time through it, you know, you have to trust in your measurements to make sure it's gonna work but if it's your second one, just put it on top of the other one because you know, <laughs> if you make it the wrong size, you might be kicking yourself later. So we're now going to move along now and we're gonna start doing the jet in. The jet in is just a really quick easy thing to do on the ends here and then we're gonna start then going more narrow up and the way that we're gonna do it, you can, you can see here is that these boxes stay on top of each other as you work your way all the way to the top. So let's begin to do that section next of the pattern. So now turning my work and we're gonna start the next row and this is before we're gonna start doing that shaping. So the next row what we're going to do instead of expanding on both sides of putting two single crochets on the outside, we're only gonna just do one. So it's now gonna start going up straight up. So let's uh, begin to do that next and so we're gonna chain up one and we're going to single crochet in the first one and then we're gonna repeat the pattern going all the way across. So the next one here has to be a slip and then a half and then a slip and then a half. So on the other side, when you get to the other side, the very last stitch will be one single crochet instead of two. So please do that all the way across for your next row and then we'll continue from that point. So when you get to the other side, just make sure the last one is a single crochet. So now let's turn our work and let's go back to the pattern and let's review what we're going to do next because now we're gonna start shaping the raglans. That's coming up next. So here we are in the pattern and we're now going to start shaping the raglan. So we just finished this one here and we're gonna start the next row. 
Now the next row it says to do what we're going to do and we're gonna slip stitch across the first three stitches first then chain one and then start off with a single crochet. So what we're doing is we're creating that jet out that appears in the pattern. So that by doing that and then we're gonna repeat all the way across the pattern until you get to the final last three stitches and then we are going to uh, just one single crochet in the first one of three and then leave the other two stitches unworked and that creates the jet out then on the other side. So then we're gonna repeat the next row just like you see here and, and we're just gonna start establishing it and then we're gonna start this next row of doing single crochet two together and then uh, going all the way and the final two stitches will be two together on this side. So we're gonna essentially go in like this instead of out. And then what we're going to do then from that particular point is that we are going to then um, um, do the next three rows and it's all the same as what you see here. And then it says to repeat the last four rows three times. So it's this row plus these three equals the number four. So don't think about going all the way back up for repeating the last three rows because you have the next three rows right here which is uh, three of the four of them and then the first one here. So we're gonna progressively get smaller and you keep doing that and repeat the last four rows three times as you see here and once you have that done then we're just gonna get to the very top and then just finalize it at the very end. So let's begin to shape the raglan. So what we're going to do is coming in the first stitch Okay, normally we would chain one in single crochet or something but we're gonna go right into the first stitch. It's the same one that it's coming out of and you were going to slip stitch. So just pull through and through. So that was one and then do the next one through and through. This is two and do the next one, the third one, pull through and through and this is where you're going to start the pattern. So this is the jet out that's gonna appear on the edge. So then you're gonna chain up one in one single crochet here as you see it. So right now what you're looking at here is that this is the half double crochet. So this is a slip. So the first one here must be a half double crochet in order to work it. Okay, so therefore it becomes really quite easy. So it says repeat the pattern. You know what the pattern is. It's either a slip or a half. You just have to look for the key markers especially going forward because we're gonna start eliminating stitches. So we're gonna start off with putting a half double crochet in the first one and then a slip in the next one. So make sure that you're really looking for that. So you can see this is a half so it must be a slip on top therefore the one in behind, uh, in front of it is obviously a half. So slip in half and slip in half. So I want you to come all the way to the other side and I want you to end three stitches early and then I'll see you there and then we'll just finish up that, up that area to make sure that you got that one right. So continue along as in the pattern across. So I'm coming up all the way to the end. I have four stitches left over. So I have one, two, three and four. So I'm continuing the pattern. So I'm now half double crocheting and if you remember when I started this side it was a half double crochet so I know it's right. And then there's the final three stitches. So in the first one of the three you're going to just single crochet and leave the other two stitches unworked. So then you're just gonna turn your work and then begin to continue along. So let's begin to do the next row. So in the next row we're just gonna chain up one and we're gonna single crochet into the same stitch and then you're just gonna do the repeat pattern across. So this one here you can see it's a half double crochet. This is a single so we're gonna start off with a, uh, a slip stitch first. Okay and then the next one is a half. If I said that was a single it should have been, I should have said it a slip. So it's a slip and a half. And you're gonna continue that all the way across to the final stitch and I'll see you over there in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way to the other side. So when I started it was a slip stitch and so then the last one here will be one single crochet. Okay so just think about what was happening on the other side. That's what keeps this whole thing in balance. So we're gonna just turn our work and do the next row. In the next row we're gonna start eliminating stitches out. So we're gonna chain up one to begin and we're gonna put the first two together with a single crochet two together. So go right into the first stitch pull through and then just jump into the next stitch in and pull through and you have three loops on the hook. Pull through all three and that was a single crochet two together. So now you're gonna repeat the pattern as you know it. So this one is a half double crochet therefore it's gotta be a slip. This one's gonna be the half double crochet. Again look for where these uh, stitches are and at any point if you think you're going off these boxes will not line on top of each other. So if you're off it'll show that as well. So we're gonna slip and then half and then slip 
and then in half and then when you get to the other side which I'll get there in just a moment the last two stitches will be come together with the two single crochet two together but we'll get there in just a moment. I'll see you there in just a moment. When you get to the other side I just did a slip and that's what I did after I did the first one over here and then the last two are gonna be come together. So go into the next stitch, pull through and hold it and then go into the final stitch pull through and hold it and then put the two together just like that. So that was the next row. So now we're going to really start doing the repeat pattern of doing the last uh, uh, four rows together. Okay, so the last four rows at a repeat. So the one row that we just did right now is going to be the first one of four that you're going to repeat. So the next one that we're gonna do, the next three rows are all gonna be the same. So chain up one and then one single crochet in the first and then just repeat the pattern. So here's the half, I can see it. So the first one is a slip, so that must be a half this time. So half and slip and you're gonna go and repeat the pattern all the way to the other side and then on the other side you just go right to the very final stitch and you're gonna do that for a total of three rows. So the last row I just did of two together and, and then these next three are gonna be the repeat of the last four rows three times. So continue to do that across and then I'll see you back here in just a moment. So now I've just come all the way across and I've just stopped. So now I'm gonna repeat this row two more times. So just turning around and chaining one, single crochet in the first and then just continue to repeat pattern. So this is a half double crochet, I can see it and then this is a slip. So this must be a slip to start and then half and slip in half and do all the way to the end just like that in single crochet in the last one. So meet me over there in just a moment. So I'm coming to the other side is slipping and the last one is a single. So I just change or turn around sorry and then chain up one and then single crochet in the first one and again just do opposite what you see. So this is a slip, this is a half. So the first one must be a half to start and then slip. So I'm gonna continue then all the way across and then we're gonna quickly review then on uh, doing the repeating of these four rows a total of three more times and I'm gonna have you do that and I'll do that off camera as well. So I'm coming up to the other side just repeating the pattern as I know it and continue right to the end and it's single crochet in the last one. So that was doing our four rows. Okay so we did well, the first row was two together and then the next three were just regular just straight up. So it's going to look to you as if it's just narrowly going in on an angle and that's supposed to be even though the last um, three rows were just straight up it just does that. So we're gonna have to repeat those four rows again a total of three more times. So just record that on your sheet. So just to reiterate we're just gonna chain up one and put the first two stitches together for two single crochets together and this is gonna get faster because you're eliminating stitches as you go. So the next one here is a slip. This is a half so this one must be a half to start and then just continuing all the way to the other side and then the other side the last two come together and then the next three rows are just straight up so you don't, you're not adding on or subtracting any stitches in the end. So I need you to repeat these rows a total of three more times in order to do it. So we, I've just got you started okay so now you're just gonna do this and then the extra th three more rows of just regular straight up and then you're gonna decrease again and three more rows straight up and then decrease again and then three more rows um, straight up and then you're gonna meet me there and then we'll finish up towards the top. So please do these uh, rows and I'll see you there on the top in just a moment. So I've now completed my repeating of the last four rows three times. I have it uh, just above the camera here and what I need to do now is that the next row and the row after that, there's two rows here, they're gonna just do a single crochet two together decrease and then we're gonna do one row of just regular uh, single crochet with the, the pattern of going across. So we're gonna repeat these two rows a total of five more times after we get this done. So what this is doing is it's actually speeding up the process of actually eliminating stitches out so that it will get more narrow more quickly. So what we're going to do then from this point is that we're gonna bring you back here and then we're gonna continue this and so we'll do these two rows and then you repeat it five more times if you're doing the four years old and then of course the other sizes have a different size and the adult size you'll have to refer to that to that one. So let's begin to do that now. So moving on to the next row as you can see here I have all of this already done. So I'm going to then start continuing along. Next row is chain up one and we're gonna put the first two together and then we move along in the pattern. So this is a half so it must be slip and this is a slip so it must be half. So we're gonna slip and then half and then you keep doing that all the way across. 
So the very final two stitches are gonna be put together when we get to the other side there in just a moment. So we're gonna get, we're gonna get faster and faster as we eliminate stitches out um, on the ends in order to get this all the way to the neck area on the top of the, of the pullover. So continuing along, I'll be there in just a moment. Might as well just leave the camera on. Once you get used to this pattern, it just, your brain is just doing it. It's not even really thinking much about it. At least I don't think so. <laughs> okay, so let's continue right to the end. And then the final two stitches that are next, one and two will become two together. So just put those two together. And then you'll turn your work and then the next row above it is just one straight up. So single crochet into the very first one. So chain one, single crochet in the first one and repeat the pattern as you know it. This here is a half, this is a slip. Therefore the first one must be a half to start and then a slip. And you do these, this row all the way straight across. The very last stitch is just gonna be one single crochet. So what I want you to do is that I want you to repeat the last row in this row a total of five more times if you're doing the four years of age. If you're doing the, the bigger sizes it's gonna be um, much bigger. So it'll be five times, repeat five times or eight times depending on the size. And of course for the adult size version you'll refer to that as well. So hopefully you've been uh, getting a hold of this pattern. So you're gonna do two of these panels in order to do this um, particular idea. And I like how that both panels are exactly identical. So once you get one done, uh, it's just a matter of repeating for the second time around. And then you can use this panel to overlay the first one to make sure that you got it right. Which is nice, right? So the very, you're gonna go right to the very end. So half double crochet and then this one is one single right at the end. So to repeat this row, uh, two rows five more times is what I need to do for myself. So it's just chain up one, put the first two together and then repeat the pattern as you know it. So this is a, um, a half right here. This is a slip so therefore it must start off with a half this time and carry on. So please do the repeats that you need to do and then meet me back here in just a moment. Okay so now I've just repeated the last two rows five more times and now I'm finished. So now you need to go back and do the next panel. What I highly recommend that you do before you do that though, um, if this is your second panel, so if this is the second time that you've done it, um, what you need to do is that you need to just put it on top of the other one to make sure that it's the same size. They're both exactly identical uh, to it. So if this is the first one that you're doing and you're doing a second, what you should do is to use it as a guide for your second one. So when I put the other one that I started with, just look where the strings are here at the bottom. Just lay it right over top and just uh, if you've stretched it in any way just make sure that you stretch it back and this shaping should be identical uh, for both of them as you're going all the way to the top just like you see. So this is the neckline that you see here and uh, it's actually really quite easy and now we're going to begin to do in the sleeves. So if this is your panel make sure you do your second one before moving on to the sleeves and then we're gonna do the sleeves next. We're now gonna move on to doing the sleeves. We're gonna start off with the cuff here first and then build our way out and then it will jet out and then it'll come back in and then you'll do all the way to the top of the shoulder. So this one's a smaller panel of the two panels that you must do. You need to do two of these. I'm gonna recommend something to you and you can take my advice or leave it at all. It all the, it's up to you. What I recommend to you is that you have to measure the cuff. It's not a, mount, a set amount of rows. It's a measurement to the actual um, tape measure. What I'd highly recommend is that you do one cuff and then do the other cuff at the exact same time and lay them up over top of each other before moving on. And then leave the second cuff attached to a yarn ball and leave it off to the side for a rainy day. Okay? Therefore what could happen with you is that if you do not get this right okay and you do the second completely and you mismeasure, it is very possible that you have one cuff that's bigger than the other. So what I would recommend that, that you do is do both cuffs at the same time and just leave one off to the side and then come back to it later and then just do the rest of it as per the pattern. So that's, I'm gonna leave that to you. So our first thing is that we need to get the puff going or the cuff going and then all we're just going to do is that we're just gonna go back and forth and we're gonna create these ridges. And then once we get to the measurement, we are going to stop and then we're gonna just leave it as is and we don't fasten off and we're just gonna crochet back and forth on this uh, level here. So what I want to do is I want you to, uh, to get started on here. I'll show you how to do it and then we'll bring back here and then we'll begin to do the rest of the uh, sleeve. 
So let's begin to do the cuff. You'll need to do two of them but do not fasten off after you do the cuff because you're gonna continue along in the pattern. So I'd recommend just what I just talked about. Now for the adult size the information is there. It's chain 10 and for the kids size right now it's chain 8. So let's do that. So we're gonna 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Once you get that done you're gonna just go second chain from the hook. So just count it back. So 1 and 2 and just single crochet yourself across. Okay so nice and easy and all you're just going to do then is that you're just gonna go back and forth on these uh, on this a little section here. It will not take you very much time at all. So for the kid size version um, for four years it's only seven and a half inches long that you have to go or it could be eight or nine and then the adult sizes those are uh, mentioned on that pattern if you wanna take a look at those. So you just, once you get to the end you're just gonna turn your work. Now you'll notice that the, the actual cuff has ridges. So we need to create that. So we're gonna start that doing that now. So we're gonna chain up one and it says um, one SCTBL. That's one single crochet in the back loop. So chaining of one you're gonna go into the back loop. So instead of both of the strands you're just gonna dive into the back loop only. So it's the furthest loop away from you and single crochet in the back loop all the way across. So once you turn your work you're just gonna do the back loop again. So it creates these beautiful ridges that you see within the cuff work itself. And go right to the end. Use the back loop of the end one two and then turn your work. So turn chain one and in the back loop so just jump into the back loop only and then just go across. So just go back and forth until the distance measures out and then you just need to get to seven and a half inches or eight or nine or whatever size it says in the pattern for the adults and once you're done you are going to stop. So what you wanna pay attention to is when you do both of this, uh, the two cuffs if you're gonna do them at the same time see where this strand of yarn is. So if you're finishing off and you think it's the same size and once one is here and the other strand is on the other side like so you know it's not equal. So you gotta make sure you're looking for the starting strands. So get yourself to the size that you wanna go and then what you want, want to do is then pick me back up from here and then I'm gonna begin to begin from that point. So let's do that now. So I've now hypothetically finished off my seven and a half inches. I'd already had this done off camera because I wanted to make sure both cuffs were the same size because I did them at the same time. So now all I'm just gonna do is turn the work this way. Okay so it was like this so it'd go this way and what you have to do is equally space the amount of single crochets along this top area. I had to do it twice in order to get mine right. So it's gonna say work 19, 23 or 23 stitches across evenly along the top of this edge. So you're just gonna just chain your work and for the adult size those uh, that information will be slightly different is that you're gonna single crochet along the top. So count them out. So one and two and three. I'm gonna stop at four. So I'm gonna stop at four right here. So what I wanna do is equally space my 19 in there. It could be 23 or 23 and for the adult size it could be different and if I get to the end here and I still have more stitches to go then I mean so I should frog and retry. You wanna get it as close as you can so that it's equal balanced as you're going all the way across. So please do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I now have my 19 in here. It's my second time doing this so I was actually pretty accurate this, uh, the first time. The first time I did it I had to frog because I was um, just spacing too far apart. So I have my 19 in there. It could be 23 for you or whatever size it is in the adults. So now we're gonna start and we have to establish our pattern as we know it. So we're gonna turn our work and begin again. So we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna do one single crochet in the outside. So the outsides will always be a single crochet like it was before even if there's a, um, you're making it bigger or decreasing it's always gonna be a single crochet on the outsides. So then we have to establish our pattern. So the very first time is that we are going to put in a half double crochet in the next. So let's establish the pattern and then we're going to do a slip in the next. So half and slip and half and slip and I want you to go all the way to the other side and then the last stitch is gonna be a single crochet. So please do that. I'll see you on the other side. So in the last stitch that when you get to the other side is just a single crochet like I promised you. So now the next row all we're just going to do then is that we are going to just chain up one 
and we're going to single crochet in the first one like we had one before and we're gonna slip stitch in the next half double crochet just like you see here and then we're going to put in a slip stitch in our sorry a half double crochet in the next one and we're gonna repeat that all the way to the other side and just finish the pattern off as you know it the last uh, stitch will be just a single crochet. So please do this all the way across this is the next row number two. So I'm coming to the other side the last one will be a single crochet as we know it. So let's uh, begin again so this is the third time for the next row is just chain up one and then single crochet in the first one and just continue to do the pattern. So we can see that this is a half this is a slip so therefore this must be a half to start and then the next is a slip. Again identifying the stitches it just becomes easier for you just in case that you're messing up the pattern in any way. If you know what to look for you can see your errors right away. So now this row classifies that the pattern has been established which it has. You can start seeing the bumps now going uh, down the sleeve and so then we're gonna begin the rest of the sleeve after this point. So we're just gonna continue and we can now see the pattern taking shape sort of speak right. So in the very last stitch you're just gonna put in a single crochet as you normally would have been doing all the way along. Okay and slip like that. So let's turn it work and it says now we have to shape the sides. So what's gonna happen now is that we're gonna start growing this out like this. Okay so let's begin to do that next. So this is the other one here. So we're pretty much here and now we're gonna just jet out really quite strongly and we're gonna repeat the, the, la the next row that we're about to do several times. So it, for this particular case it's gonna be repeating the row I believe what's it's either six, six or eight depending on the child size you're doing and then for the adults it'll be slightly different as well. So let's uh, continue along. So we're going to chain up one and put in two single crochets in the first one. So that's gonna make it increase and then you're following the pattern all the way to the other side. So this is a half, this is a slip so therefore we have to start off with a slip and continuing all the way to the other side. So on the other side the last stitch is gonna have two single crochets put it into it and then that will expand the other side at the same time. So once you get this row done you need to repeat this row either six or eight times depending on the child size. You'll have to look at the adult size uh, pattern for the repeat in order to grow it out uh, for that particular level uh, in the project. So once you get to the other side just two single crochets right into the end. So we're gonna repeat this a total of six more times for my size so just turn it around just chain up two sorry chain up one and then place in two single crochets into the first one and then repeat the pattern across. So I can see this is a slip, this is a half therefore this must be a slip and then this one's a half and so on and in the very last stitch it's gonna be two single crochets. So please do that for your repeats and then I'll be back here in just a moment. So now I've just completed the repeat pattern. So I've done my rows one through six of the repeat and you could have eight or depending on what the adult version is. We're now gonna shape the raglan and now for the next row we're going to jet in like we did uh, with the front panel. So we're gonna just jet in three stitches. So let's begin to do that again. So just coming into the first stitch just insert in we're just slip stitching. So one, two, and go all the way to the third and pull through. So now we're gonna start and repeat the pattern from what we know. So we're going to chain up one and single crochet into the same one that's your outside one and now we look at it so this is here is the half so it must be slip and this is a slip so it must be half. So let's just start with the slip and then continue with half and etc. Et so you're gonna go all the way to the end except for the, uh, the final three and on the first one of the three that's where you're gonna stop. So I'll meet you there in just a moment. So just repeat the pattern as you know it all the way across. So I've just repeated the pattern all the way across and I see the final three stitches. So one, two and three. So I've got one more to go so I'm just gonna do a slip and so the final one this is one, two and three. The first one there of the three is gonna get a single crochet and now you've just shaped 
your raglan. So now you're gonna turn and you're gonna leave those two stitches unworked and now you're gonna begin again. So next row is that we're going to repeat the exact same pattern. So we're gonna chain up one, one single crochet in the same one and just look at it where you are. So this is half, this is slip. So we must start off with a half this time and slip and etc. and go right to the very end of this row here and then just put in a single crochet at the end. So continue to do your pattern across. So I'm repeating the pattern all the way across as I know it and I'm just coming into my very end and just single crochet. So now we're gonna turn our work and it says for the next, uh, for the next row we're gonna put single crochet two together. So this is going to be the starting of a repeat of four rows. So this is gonna be the first row of four. So we're just gonna put the first two together like we already have been doing before in this pattern and then we start the pattern. So this is a half, this is a slip so we're gonna start off with a half and you're gonna get faster and faster at this now because you're gonna get smaller and smaller as you're working your way to the shoulder. So you continue all the way across and then in the final two stitches you're going to put those two together as well. So this is row number one of the four that you will be repeating. So this is number one. So I'll see you at the end of this row. So the very final two stitches of this row are gonna be two together. This is row number one of four for the repeat. So now let's repeat, let's sorry, let's start off with the next three rows and the next three rows are just normal rows. So just chain up one, one single crochet in the first one and just repeat the pattern as you know it. So it'll start off with a slip and a half and a slip and a half and do that all the way across. So once you do that then just turn your work and do it again and again. So what I want you to do is that I want you to do these three rows just like you see and then I want you to repeat the next um, set of three. So the first one will be a single crochet together, the next three rows are, are just regular and then do it again of two together and the next three rows are, are this are um, just regular and then do it one more time if you're repeating it exactly for the child size of the four years of age. Now if you're doing a smaller size uh, child, sorry a uh, larger size child it's only repeating of uh, two more times instead of three. So just refer to the pattern if you need to do that. So I'm gonna leave that in your capable hands. So um, so this is one of, sorry this is the second of the fourth of the repeat. So I'm going to repeat this uh, two more times and then I'm gonna do the whole set of uh, repeating four rows three more times in a row. So let's do that and hopefully that doesn't confuse you too much. So just refer to the pattern if you have any questions at this point and I'll see you at the end of this, this part. So here we are in the pattern. I'm struggling a little bit to communicate what I need you to do. So we did one row of single crochet two together on the edges and then the next three rows were just regular. So we do that one time over and then the instruction says repeat the last four rows a set amount of time. So for the four years of age it was repeating those sets of instructions three more times and you'll see that in the adult it'll, it'll be a certain amount of, uh, of time. So look at the pattern for that. So that means that we have to do single crochet two together again and then three more and then single crochet two together again and then three more and then single crochet together again and then three more. So it gives you a total of 12 more uh, rows that you have to do. So this is going to make it more narrow as you're working your way up and if I zoom out here this is the other one that we were working on. So you can see that it gets more narrow as you're continuing to go upward. So this is kind of where we are in the pattern if you lay the two on top of each other. So you can see we got a bit of work to do in order to get ourselves to go up and and so on. So just do your repeats and then I'll meet you at the end of the repeats and then we'll continue along because the last top half of the section is slightly different than what we're doing right now. So let's uh, continue along. So I've just finished my repeat patterns that I talked about. I'm not gonna go over that again because <laughs> that'd be kinda crazy because I don't even know what I'm talking about half the time. So I've done that repeat pattern. It's a total of uh, three more times that I did it and this is where I am. So you can see I still have a section to go to go to the top. So for the next two rows that's gonna be repeating uh, rows until you get to the very end of the top of the shoulder and it's gonna get even more narrow quicker. So let's uh, cover the next two rows. So the next two rows repeating is gonna be chaining of one. You're gonna put the first two together like you already know how to do and then repeat the pattern. So this is half, this is slip. So the first one must be a slip and then a half and then you keep on going to the other side and again it's important that you keep yourself organized with these kind of patterns in order to make sure you get them right because it's not like it's one of something it's like you got two sleeves, two bodies and etc. So it's important that you get it right the first time. So when you get all the way to the end the last two will be two single crochets together. Ok. 
Okay, so the last two is two single crochets together. In the next row, just, just going straight up. So no decreasing. You're gonna chain one, one single crochet in the first one and then look at it. So this is half, this is slip. So we must start off with a half this time. And just carry the pattern over. So you go right to the very end of the row and then what you're going to do is that you're gonna repeat the last row and this row a set number of times. So it's five times uh, for the four years of age and then it's eight times then for the um, six or eight years of age and then uh, obviously the adults will be uh, a different number. So you're just gonna keep repeating these two rows until you get the set number of done. So I'm gonna leave that with you and then I'm gonna carry up to the top of this and I will meet you up there because uh, if you have both of these done at that point then you're gonna be ready to assemble and get things even further along in your project. So um, just continue to do this. So just repeating what you already know a total um, two rows for a set number of times as per the pattern. Just like that. And then turn your work, record that on your notes and continue along. So once you had your repeat rows, uh, the two rows for a set number of times, you finish off and then that's it. You're at the very top and you should be able to count the number of stitches there are. It tells you how many more stitches that are remaining at the end. Mine was nine. So when, if you're doing your second one, just lay the second one on top of the other one and just verify that it is the same size on top of each other because they are sleeves, right? They should be the same. So now at this point, if you haven't done your second sleeve, go back in this tutorial and go to finish it again and get your second one done because now we're gonna start sewing things together. So you're gonna uh, need a darning needle and obviously more of this uh, color yarn and then we're gonna uh, do the collar afterward. I've already kind of got the collar already started but I will show you how to do that as well. So now it's a matter of putting things together. So let's do that first. So let's begin sewing the sleeves together first. So we're gonna put these together right down right where you see the cuffs here. We're gonna fold it over and we're gonna sew along the edge just like you see here. So we're gonna leave this open because we're gonna attach this to the main section of this. What I'd highly recommend is see where this uh, uh, ending strand is. I'd recommend that when you were going to fold these in half that you do them both at the same time. So don't take the other one and then turn it upside down and have this on the other side because it may look slightly different if you go to do that. So just keep it consistent and just fold them in half and just right where it jets out you wanna leave where it's jetting out and just wanna start attaching with the whip stitch. So let's uh, cover how to do that. So we're gonna attach with the whip stitch and all you just wanna do is just grab a piece of yarn. So it just, this is your sewing yarn and you're gonna just put a slip knot on the other side of the, of the yarn. So you're going to concentrate on putting these together. So you just wanna put them together on the very edge. So just go into one side and fold it up and get the other and then just pull it across and stop when you get close to that slip knot. And then once you get close to this snip, the slip knot, I want you to insert the needle through it and pull through and that'll lock that into position. So take this uh, strand of yarn that is the remaining like so and then just move slightly down and try to match exactly where you're seeing it on the other side and just come straight across and just attaching these together all the way down to the cuff. So you just, this is called a whip stitch. So take your time because you know you've put in a lot of work already. So take your time in sewing these together. So this side here that you're looking at will be the inside of when a person's wearing it. So the other side's coming across as nice and clean looking. So you wanna be conscious of that as well. So once you've just buried in this extra yarn strand long enough, you can just simply cut that out. Okay, so that'll stay on the inside of your your pullover and I want you to continue just to match and go all the way down right to the end of the cuff. Okay, so just continue to match it like so and just put those together. So I'll leave that with you and I'll show you how to finish one of these off and then I'm gonna get you to do the other sleeve too. So as you get all the way down to the cuff, just match the stitches together because you went across like this, they'll just match each other. Okay, because there's the right amount of stitches. See this one here? We're going to, that's your starting strand. We're going to begin to hide that in afterwards. So you go right to the very end of your cuff. Once you get to the end of the cuff, I want you to just go in through and then kind of tie a little knot onto itself. Like so. So to hide this in the best, 
is just continue the, the yarn up on the inside only from where you came. Okay, so don't go to the other side of the project. Just coming in once and then going back in the other direction a second time and go back in the other direction a third time. Just again staying on this side of the work. So that's been attached. So now that you went back and forth three times you can literally cut that right out. So the other strand of yarn that you have is what was your starting. Just throw that into the darning needle. It's kind of already locked in a, pos a position because it's called a slip knot for a reason or slip knot for your starting knot. So you're just gonna glide it up on the inside of it as well and just get it stuck underneath some stitch work. And I would recommend it's already in a knot so it won't really pull itself out but just go twice. You can go three, three times if you've left it long enough to do so and therefore you'll have a nice ending to that story as well. So what I want you to do is I want you to do the exact same thing with the other one. So the nice side of it will appear on the other side when you go to fold it out and it should be really well hidden at this point. So do the other side next and I will see you there and I will get you that done and then I'll see and we'll put the rest of it together. So let's begin to do the assembly. So we have the main body here. There, this is a front or back. It doesn't matter. I've got my sleeves now sewn. They're still inside out. And now what I want to do is that I want to attach them along the side. So right from the base, right where I was, is that I want to attach it right to the very top here. Okay? And then I'm gonna do the same with the other side. So what I want to do is that I want to flip it over and then with the other panel, once it's attached, the other panel will then go on the other side of the sleeve right like so. So let's uh, begin to do that next and I'm going to do that off camera here because I don't really need to show you how to do that. You already know how to attach. So what you just want to just do is keep everything together just like so and just come down just a little bit just to make sure that the both of the panels, the front and the back are attached just slightly just down here right at the very edge and then you're good to go. So uh, so so on your sleeves now and then we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so now I've just sewn everything together so my uh, sleeves are now in position. I'm still looking at the inside out. Okay, so I haven't switched that out because I wanna do my collar first. So it says to do the lower edging and then come back to the collar. It's already inside out. I'm gonna do the collar now. So I've actually done some of the collar already in advance and what it is is that you want to do your chaining of a certain amount. So for the collar, it's chaining of 12 and then single crochet, second chain from the hook and then it's in the back loops. Again, it's exactly how doing the sleeve is just slightly longer. So it doesn't give you the amount of inches that you need to go because the fact is is that it, you need to just put it and lay it around the existing project and you wanna have a little bit of stretch to it. Okay, so that it has a nice uh, look at the top. So what you should be able to do is that when you go to put this down, let me, let me just do it as if this is the back here. So it doesn't matter if it's front or back at this point. So what I wanna do is that I wanna kinda lay it out and see okay is this big enough yes or no. So if the collar for example was only going a partial way around I know that I gotta keep on going but you want a little bit of stretch to it so I just happen to finish this at this particular point. So all I'm just going to do is that I'm just going to just use the remaining of the strand coming from the yarn ball okay and I'm gonna use that to sew it. So let me just uh, finish this off. Um, I just happened to finish that uh, collar exactly how you see it. Um, I thought I might have to crochet a bit more because I wasn't sure how far I'd need to go. So I'm going to start off in the back. So I'm gonna classify this as the back of the sweater at this particular point. Uh, I guess this is what makes it front or back so that the seam line will be on the back. And I want to just put the yarn that was leading to the hook at one point and I want to position it so it's right in the middle of the back. So I just want to grab it around the stitches like so and I want to whip stitch this into position using the top edge of the pullover. So again I want to make sure that I'm 
testing it once in a while to make sure that the collar is looking even. You may even want to just put in a stitch marker just to hold it to make sure that you're not over stretching or you're under stretching anything at this point. Really it's kind of an eyeing up game and that's why they never provided you with any kind of uh, number of rows because it's really subjective. Um, so I guess the tighter uh, the the top that you want it you just make it smaller and just make it stretch a little bit more and of course if you want it looser then you just make the collar bigger and then just kind of sew it into position as you go. So without further ado I'm gonna continue to, to whip stitch this together and I'll see you at the end of this section. So I'm just sewing the rest of the collar into position. I've already been around the front and now I'm coming around the back and I've just kind of just lightly stretched it a little bit and now I'm coming all the way back to where it started. Now the other thing is that we have is that the collar is not sewn together yet. So we still have the outside here. So what we're going to do at this point is just take the remaining of the yarn that is on the needle and you're just gonna just whip it around the stitch work. Now because this was a straight rectangular the stitches on the edges should match each other exactly. And remember we're still looking at the inside of this so this um, when I go to flip it in the inside out you won't really see this line at all. So I'm gonna go right to the top of the collar obviously and get it nice and sealed off and then we're gonna use the techniques of hiding in the loose ends just like I showed you with going in and out three times. So go right to the top. So just kinda come into the top and just tie a little knot. It just secures it into position so just sliding in and then just guide the needle underneath the stitch work towards this side of it. Don't, don't go through to the other side. So go back and forth a total of three times. And then I gotta have to hide in my starting strand of that. Again it's the same technique of just putting the darning needle onto it and then just guiding it through three times. So hopefully you left enough strands to do that now that I tell you right. So just one. Usually if you're doing this kind of project user you're familiar with crochet anyway. So you just guide it three times. So now we're ready to flip this um, tickler uh, pullover as if the child is wearing it or if you're doing the adult size as if you're wearing it and then we're going to just crochet the final edging along the base of the sweater. So let me flip it inside or let me flip it to the right direction and let's begin the bottom. So let's begin the final revolutions. There's a total of three revolutions along the base. So now it's flipped it as if the child is wearing it. Now I've got to flip so that the back of the collar here is on the back. So I'm gonna start at the back and keep the seam line in the back. And what we're gonna do is see this, it's like a shark mouth. So we're gonna just crochet all the way around it. So let's just start off at the base and it's just a single crochet. And we're just going to evenly space the single crochet all the way. So we might as well start right on the edge here. And right here you can see the stitches so it helps you get started. So just slip stitch in and then just chain one in one single crochet. Okay so there's no um, there's um, like no uh, wrong answer for doing these kind of ideas. It's just single crocheting all the way around. So once you get to the side here just equally space it as good as you can get it and then come back down the other side and then all the way back around. So you're just gonna really just form a big circle at this point. So do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm coming back around and I had started right here. So I'm just coming back around just circling around. I'm just equally spacing along the side diagonal here. No biggie, I'm not really thinking too much about it. Just slamming in this the single crochet. So I'm gonna hit the eventually to where it started which will be just one after this one. And when I get there I want to just slip stitch the first single crochet and then begin another round. So the another round is just based on what you just created. So chain up one and then this one is just really easy. No brainer. Just follow the single crochets all the way around for one more time and then we're gonna come back with our third round and it'll be reverse single crochet also known as the crab stitch. We'll give it the conclusion then of this particular project. So um, actually it's been a lot of fun to work on this and uh, I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way back around to where it started. So you'll notice that the, these two rounds just took away that sharp edge of the, the base of it. It's now made it curvy like it, uh, like it promises. The curvy reference in this pattern isn't referring to weight. We use it here that now is the new thing but it's actually just referring to the bottom base area. So I'm coming back to where it started right here. I'm just crocheting, single crocheting across. 
So what, we, what we're gonna do is when we get there we're gonna slip stitch and join to the beginning single crochet and then we're gonna start doing the reverse single crochet back around in the opposite direction. So the reverse single crochet is a really good way of finishing items off that looks really amazing. I've seen it done tons of times in afghans and etc. And it's really kinda neat. So we're just single crocheting across and coming back around to where we had started and then slip stitch to the beginning. So I'm just gonna zoom in the camera and I'm gonna show you how to reverse single crochet. So to reverse single crochet all you just need to do is that we're gonna go back in the opposite direction so it's in the direction for where the handle comes from. So chain up one and go into the exact same one and then go in and then just scoop the yarn and pull it forward. Okay and then scoop the yarn and pull through. Okay, you don't see it yet. It's gonna appear in a second. So go to the next one that's right before it. So it's called reverse. So just dive right in, grab the yarn and pull down and then you're going to scoop the yarn. So go to the next one behind, scoop the yarn, pull over and then scoop. So scoop, so pull and keep on going. So just going in behind and pull through. And this is creating like a rope kind of finishing to it. You see it happening here. It's a nice way of giving it nice texture. And so you're just gonna reverse single crochet. If now if you've never done this before, it takes a bit of getting used to, but once you get used to it, it's pretty easy. And you're just crocheting in the direction from which you just came. And you're gonna go all the way around and then finish it off with a slip stitch and etc. So that's what it looks like then as you're going all the way around. So let me uh, do that and I'll see you at the end of this round and this concludes today's sweater. So I'm coming all the way back around and then I'm just going to weave in my ends using a darning needle. You might as well, you've done everything else like that and uh, this is the bottom section. So you'll notice that this is a nice thicker bottom here to be able to place it over top of your body. So it's a nice way of finishing off your crochet project with a nice sturdy edge. Remember the first time I saw a reverse single crochet I was like what is that and then I had to look it up and didn't even know it existed. So that was like going back a few years ago. So I'm always learning some new things and now when I see it I'm like oh yeah that, I can see why they would do that. Makes total sense. So you're gonna go right to the very end and we started off with the first one. So now we're gonna take a darning needle and we're going to finish this off. So just pull through the loop. It's important on finishing these properly especially with the reverse single crochet or the crab stitch. You don't wanna ruin the edge of this by using standard techniques. So you wanna use your darning needle for that. So you're just gonna take it in and just drag it towards you the direction you wanna go so that it'll pull it nicely into position. If you go in the other direction it will pull it away from the work. So you go in there and then go back in the other direction for second time. And then you go back in the third direction like so. And that's all she wrote. So I'm just going to just do a final conclusion of this video. I'll just uh, stretch back out. You can see what it looks like and then that's good to go. So this concludes the four year old size. We have the collar. You can roll it down. You know pretty easy peasy uh, child can wear it pretty easily and you can roll it down and it just uh, drapes really quite nicely. It's got a nice big open bottom to it so that the child can get inside of it. You got your sleeves going on and uh, this looks amazing and I'm really quite excited about it. This is the back side of the project. Now that I think about it this is the front side and the only way I can tell is by the seam line in the collar and then where I finished off the base. So this is the conclusion on how to do the curvy pullover. This is the child size version but the instructions that you saw today is exactly the same as far as the layout that it would do. You just have to substitute the adult information and the larger sizes for kids in order to make it work. So have a good day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.